I am Lakshmi Prasanna, Assistant Professor, Department of ECE, Institute of Aeronautical Engineering. So, in this session, we will discuss about the question bank related to Module 2. So, here Module 2 is the operation of 8086 microprocessor and interrupts. Now, so here first we will see the questions available in Part A which comes under problem solving and uh, critical thinking questions. So here the first one is explain minimum mode operation of 8086 microprocessor and draw the timing diagram for read operation. So generally here they are asking to explain the minimum mode operation. That means what are all the blocks present inside? What is the function of each block we have to write? And then we have to explain the operation with the help of timing diagrams. Especially we have discussed the timing diagrams for both the read and write cycles. So here they are asking to draw the read cycle timing diagram. So generally we have to say uh, how the minimum mode operation will take place. That means in the block diagram we know mn by mx bar pin is there. You have to set that as 1. Then it will be operating in the minimum mode. Why? Because it is active, low signal, sorry, high signal and this MX bar is active, low signal. So in order to operate in the minimum mode, you have to make that MN by MX bar pin is equal to 1. So then it will be operating in the minimum mode. So making that 1 means you have to connect that MN by MX bar pin to VCC. And uh, so minimum mode means we know it is called uh, a single processor mode. So that is why here all the control signals will be present within 8086 itself. And if you see the architecture of 8086 when it is operating in the minimum mode, all these blocks, latches, transceivers, clock generator and memory and I.O. devices will be present. So here chip selection will be there which is used to select the memory or I.O. Uh, devices. So how it will be selected means it depends on the memory mapping. So the function of latches are they are used to demultiplex the multiplex address and data lines. Here we have transceivers which will be uh, sending a valid data uh, on the data bus. And we have two control signals like DEN bar and DT by R bar. DEN bar stands for data enable. So it indicates whether a valid data is available on the data bus or not. And DT by R bar means data transmit and receive. So here receiver is the active low signal. It indicates the direction of data to or from the memory. That means whether it is writing to the memory or reading from the memory. And we have clock generator which is used to produce the clock frequency. Okay. So this is what we have to uh, discuss regarding the operation of minimum mode. So they are also asking regarding drawing the timing diagram for read operation. So here we have to concentrate on the read operation. So what is the difference between the timing diagrams in read and write operation means here we are going to consider the read signal while drawing the timing diagram. So as usual first we have to draw the clock signal which consists of four T states because one instruction that is one mission cycle here it consists of four T states T1, T2, T3 and T4 if we want to insert any wait states we can insert before this T4 and here next we have to draw the ALE signal address latch enable that will be enabled only during T1 because at T1 only the address will be sent in the remaining time cycles it will be ideal and next address and status lines so in this case also address and status lines are the multiplex lines. So the address and status lines, status lines are multiplexed with the address lines from A16 to A19. So that is why under T1 the address information will be there because ALE will be enabled only during T1. And in the remaining time states the status information will be available. And coming to address data multiplexing lines, in this case also the address and data lines will be multiplexed. 
that is from AD naught to AD fifteen. So the address information A naught to A fifteen will be there at the T one because A L E is enabled only at T one, whereas the remaining data information will be present in the remaining time states. And here we have a read signal. So R D bar means it is active low signal. So we have to represent the timing diagram with a negative pulse. So wherever the data is available, that is during T two, T three, T W and T four, in that duration only this read signal should be enabled. So since this is active low to enable, you have to draw the timing diagram with the negative pulse only. And next one is D N bar data enable. So that is the active low signal. So wherever the data is available. Uh, valid data information will be set by this signal, so it will be enabled during T two, T three, T W one, T four states only. And here D T by R bar data transmit and receive. So here transmitting means writing, receiving means reading. So here we are drawing the timing diagram for read cycle. We have to concentrate on the receiver signal. So here receiver is the active low signal. That is why you have to draw the timing diagram representing the negative pulse. And next question is demonstrate on the minimum mode operation of eight zero eight six the same minimum mode operation only. But here we have to draw the timing diagram for right operation. So a previous question also related to minimum mode. But they are asked to write, draw the timing diagram for uh, read operation. But here same information, but the timing diagram is regarding write operation. So the same information we have to write, like what are all the blocks present uh, when eight zero eight six is operating in the minimum mode, and then we have to express what is the function of each block and what is the function of the Control signals here, same. And next, we have to draw the timing diagram, especially here considering the write operation. So same timing diagram only, but here instead of previously we have drawn the read, but here we will get the write signal. So here W R bar means it is also active uh, low signal. So wherever the data information is available, that is uh, during T two, T three, T W and T four states, we have to represent with the help of negative pulse because it is active low signal. And similarly, where here the difference will occur means during this D T by R bar cycle, data transmit and receive. So transmit means here write, and receive means here read. So if we are drawing for write cycle, so we have to consider here transmit signal. Transmit signal is the active high signal, so we have to represent that signal with a positive pulse. So this is the timing diagram of write operation. And so next third one is write illustrate the function of the following pins. So here four pins are given. So we know eight zero eight six microprocessor. It is a forty pin IC, and uh, That forty pins are classified into three groups. Some signals will have common functionality in the minimum mode and maximum mode. Some pins will have different functionality in the minimum mode, and some pins will have different functionality in the maximum mode. Now, so out of all that forty pins, here the function of four pins are asked. So first pin is here: test, hold, QS not, and QS one. They are the Q status lines, and S three and S four are the normal status signals. Now coming to this uh, test bar signal, so this is active low signal. When that signal is enabled, the execution will be continued. Otherwise, the processor remains in the ideal state. That is the main point. And another signal is here hold signal. So if any other master wants to request the system bus access from the microprocessor, it will be the request will be sending through this. Hold signal only. So another master will be requesting the system bus access through this hold signal. So when this hold signal is enabled, it represents that another master is requesting the system bus. And another signal is here QS not and QS one. These two are the Q status lines. 
which says the information that is the status of the code prefetch q and so here are the two q status signals so based on the combination of the bits operation will be performed that means the status of code prefetch q can be done so here if these two signals are 0 0 no operation will be done if it is 0 1 first byte of the opcode will be fetched from the q and if it is 1 0 the q will be empty it represents q is empty if it is 1 1 subsequent byte from the q will be fetched and another two signals are here s3 and s4 so this s3 and s4 these are the two status signals which indicate the segment register selection okay so from the memory which segment is selected will be decided by this s3 and s4 status signals so here s3 s4 are the two status signals if both are 0 0 uh, extra segment uh, will be used for the memory access and if it is 0 1 stack segment if it is 1 0 code segment if it is 1 1 data segment will be selected so this is the function of these four signals so we have to write the function like this and next fourth one is explain about maximum mode operation of 8086 by drawing the timing diagram for read operation okay so here maximum mode operation we have to explain like what are all different blocks present what is the function of each block okay so here we have to explain about one important block which is called bus controller because when uh, maximum mode when 8086 is operating in the maximum mode all the control signals will not be present within 8086 they will be present in different uh, block which is called bus controller block so in order to operate uh, the 8086 microprocessor in the uh, maximum mode you have to connect this mn by mx bar pin to 0 so it means you have to connect that pin to ground because this is the mx bar which says maximum it is active low signal so in order to operate in the maximum mode we have to make that as low then only it will be enabled so this uh, when operating when 8086 is operating in the maximum mode it is called a multiprocessor mode so all the control signals will not be present within 8086 they will be present in another block which is called bus controller block so another control signals that are present in the bus controller block are here the three status signals and also the signals like interrupt acknowledgement ale dt by r bar m by i o bar that is memory and i o read uh, and another control signals like uh, write uh, all these will be present in the uh, bus controller block and so here this mode of operation generally it is uh, designed by the intel to perform 8086 to communicate with other process that is why it is called multiprocessor mode and so all these are the uh, command signals using these signals we can enable the io interface to perform read and operation from the different ports and so these are memory read and memory write uh, signals by using these uh, command signals the memory can be accessed and we can perform the read and write operation of data to and from the bus and we have here advanced memory read and memory write uh, control signals also so these control signals are used so what is the difference between the normal memory read and memory write command and advanced memory read and memory write command means the operation will be taken place if we use these signals the operation will be taken place one clock cycle earlier than the actual signals io read and io write commands so that the processor can know before itself what is the next operation that is going to happen now so since they are asking to draw the timing diagram for read operation so here we have to draw the timing diagram representing the read operation so that is why here we will have a signal which is called read 
command signal. So M R D C. It represents memory read command. So same here. First we are going to draw the clock signal representing the four T states. And next we have to draw the A L E signal address slash enable. So it will be enabled only during T one because address information will be sent only during T one. And next are the status lines S not and S two bar. So this will be also activated during T one only. Because it has to say to the processor at T1 itself what is the type of operation that is going to perform. In the next cycles, it will be inactive. And here we have this address and status lines. So address lines will be enabled during T1, whereas status lines will be enabled during the remaining T states. And similarly, address data multiplexer lines address will be enabled during T1, whereas the data will be enabled during the remaining type T states. Here M R D C memory read command. Okay, so here wherever the data is available, that is uh, during T two, T three, and T four, during that time cycles only, this memory read uh, command signal will be enabled. So this is uh, active low signal. That is why at this T states we have to indicate with active low. That is with the negative pulse. And next here DT by R bar it represents data transmit and receive. So here also transmit means write and receive means here read. Okay. So here this is the read operation. So we have to concentrate on R signal. So here R bar means it is also active low signal. So this timing diagram also should be represented with the help of negative pulse during uh, T states. T two, T three, and T four, and here this is a DE and data enable. It is active high signal, which indicates whether valid data is available on the data bus or not. So data will be available on the data bus during T two, T three, T four states only. So that is why it will be enabled only during the three T states. And so next, explain about the maximum mode operation of eight zero eight six. Same. Like previous question, first we have to explain the operation of maximum mode, but draw the timing diagram of memory write operation. So same, we have to write the information regarding maximum mode operation. What are all the blocks and how the control signals are present and what is the function of that control signals. And next here you have to draw the timing diagram for memory write operation. So here this is the timing diagram. So here we can see this is uh, the signal which represents that memory write operation. So first we have to draw the uh, clock signal indicating the four T states. Next we have to represent A L E. See that it should be enabled only during T one because address will be sent only during T one. And here next comes the status lines, address status lines, and address and data multiplexed lines. So after that we have to draw the memory write command. So here we have considered advanced memory write command signal. And so here T two, T three, T four. These are the three T states where we have to enable this command. So these are active low signals. So we have to indicate with the help of negative pulse. And here we have. Normal uh, write command, which is not advanced. So here you can see, if it is advanced, means it will be taking one clock cycle ahead, one clock cycle before. If this is the case, one clock cycle after. Same. These are active low signal, so you have to indicate with the negative pulse only. And next one is DT by R bar, which represents data transmit and receive. Here write operation means transmitting. So it is active high signal. So we have to indicate with the active high pulse. D N represents data enable. It indicates whether a valid data is available on the data bus or not. And next one is illustrate about the following pins of eight zero eight six. So here these are the four pins uh, that are represented here. We have to write the function of these four pins. 
So first one is ready MN by MX bar. So this is a minimum and maximum mode signal hold and hold acknowledgement signals. And first one is the ready signal. So it is active high signal. So generally this is the acknowledgement signal from the slow devices saying that the saying that that particular device has completed the data transfer. Okay. So if this ready signal is active low, then wait state should be inserted into the current bus cycle. And next one is MN by MX bar, which says the minimum and maximum mode operation. So here this is active high and this is active low signals. So based on enabling and disabling this signal, 8G86 will be operating in the maximum mode and minimum mode. And another signal is here hold signal. Okay. So if any other master wants to request the system bus access, it will request by enabling this hold signal only. And another one is hold acknowledgement. If the processor is willing to release the system bus access to the requested master, it will send one signal before leaving the system bus to the requested device. That signal is called hold acknowledgement signal. So this is the function of these four signals. And next question is also related to the function of the given pins. So explain about the function of the following pins. So here the four pins are given. So the first one is test signal. Next one is request and uh, uh, grant signals. And next comes Q status. And the next three signals are the normal status signals. And here test bar means it is uh, uh, active low signal. And so if the test bar pin is active low, uh, execution will be continued. Otherwise, the processor will enter into the ideal state. Getting into the ideal state means just inserting a wait states in the uh, machine cycle. And the next is regarding uh, Q request, uh, Q request and uh, grant signals, request and grant signals. So here we have two request and grant signals. If any other processor wants to request the system bus access, they can be requesting through the two request signals, either it may be RQ0 or RQ1. If the device is, uh, if the processor is willing to release the system bus access, they will be sending the grant signal to the requested device. So if the request is from RQ0, it is going to send the grant uh, as GT0. If the request is from the RQ1, it is going to send GT1 as the grant signal. And the next one is QS0 and QS1, which represents the Q status lines. That means the status of code prefetch queue. So if it is 00, zero no operation, 0, 01, first byte of the opcode from the queue, 10 empty queue, and 11 one, one, subsequent byte from the queue. And the next three, S0, S1, and uh, S2. So these are the three status signals which indicates the type of operation that is carried out. That means whether read operation or write operation. If it is read operation, whether it is from the IO port or whether it is from the memory. Okay. So based on these uh, combination of three signals, it can indicate uh, the status of operation, whether it is reading, writing, or whether it is from the IO port or memory. And next one, write the function of the given pins. So here also the four signals are given pins are given. So here ALE stands for address slash enable and INTR interrupt request, NMI non-maskable interrupt and CLK represents clock signal. And so ALE means uh, address slash enable which is used to uh, demultiplex the address and data multiplex lines. So if ALE is one, the uh, multiplex lines will carry only address. And if ALE is 0, the multiplexer lines will carry data. 
and another one is uh, INTR. INTR represents interrupt request. Okay, so if any device uh, wants to uh, give interrupt to 8086 microprocessor, it can give the interrupt through the signal which is called INTR signal. So when the interrupt comes through INTR signal, the processor will enter into the interrupt acknowledgement cycle. And another pin is NMI which is called non-maskable interrupt. This is also one of the pin. Uh, if any uh, device wants to interrupt 8086 microprocessor, it can send that particular interrupt through this NMI signal also. Okay. So the interrupt that is coming through NMI signal is called non-maskable interrupt. So that particular interrupt cannot be disabled. So this particular interrupt will be irrespective of the uh, interrupt flag bit. Whereas the interrupt coming through INTR signal, it will depend on the interrupt flag bit. If the flag bit is set only, the interrupt coming through INTR signal will be accepted. And here, next is clock signal. So this clock signal provides the basic timing for the processor operation and bus control activity. So the clock signal required for this 8086 microprocessor will be in the range 5 MHz to 6 MHz that is based on the version of 8086 microprocessor. And next question is write the function of the following pins. So this is ready, test, hold and reset. So already we have discussed what is meant by this uh, ready signal and a test bar signal, hold and here comes reset. So when the signal is uh, enabled, the microprocessor is going to get reset. That means it is going to terminate the current activity and it is going to start the execution again. And outline the interrupt structure of 8086 microprocessor and explain. So first we have to draw the interrupt structure. Okay. So indicating how many types of interrupts are there in 8086 microprocessor. And among the 256 interrupts, how they are classified? That means we, how many interrupts comes under dedicated, how many comes under reserved interrupts, how many comes under available interrupts. So this uh, diagram we have to represent. And we should also say for each interrupt type, in order to calculate the ISR, it requires the segment address and offset address. Okay. So that is why this address will be reserved for one interrupt in the interrupt vector table. And we have to write here what should be the uh, addresses of uh, each segment, how many locations will be there, how many interrupts are there, and what is the starting and ending address of the interrupt vector table. Okay. And so each interrupt type requires four bytes, which is called double word. Why it is means Higher word is used to store the value of new CS and lower address word is used to store the value of new IP. So with the combination of this new CS and new IP, it is going to calculate the physical address, which is of 20 bit size. So this information should be considered. And coming to the next part here, part B, long answer questions. So here explain the minimum mode operation of 8086 with the help of neat block diagram. So they are asking here to explain about the minimum mode operation by drawing the block diagram. So here no need to consider the timing diagrams. Just we have to draw the block diagram of minimum mode and we have to say what are different blocks available, what are different control signals and what is the function of that blocks. So this is the uh, block diagram of uh, 8086 when it is operating in the minimum mode. So here we have to concentrate that all the control signals are present within 8086 and remaining block diagram will be same for the minimum mode and maximum mode. And so we have to say the function of this uh, clock generator, demultiplexer, latches, transceivers and what is the function of this uh, memory and IO. What is the function of here? The uh, about all the control signals. 
okay so minimum mode is called uni processor mode so that is why all the control signals will be present within 8086 to operate in the uh, minimum mode you have to make that as mn by mx bar signal should be one connected to vcc so if you see here this is mn by mx bar pin which is connected to vcc and here all these are the blocks that are present in the block diagram and we know here the function of uh, latches are used to demultiplex the address and data lines the function of transceivers are it will see whether a valid data is available on the data bus and here you have two control signals den bar and dt by r bar which indicates uh, whether a valid data is available on the data bus dt by r bar means um whether uh, the direction of the data that means whether it is reading or writing and clock generator which is used to produce the clock frequency from the crystal oscillator and next question is here outline the pin configuration of 8086 microprocessor with the help of neat sketch that means we have to draw the pin diagram of 8086 which consists of all the 40 pins arranging uh, in the minimum mode and maximum mode and you have to explain the function of all that pins so here this is the pin diagram so in this pin diagram these are the signals we have to concentrate so here these signals are called minimum mode signals and these signals are called maximum mode signals whereas the remaining signals you can observe here all these are the remaining signals that have common functionality in the minimum mode and maximum mode only the functionality of these signals will change during minimum mode and maximum mode so all these 40 signals are classified into different types some of the pins have common functionality some pins will have different functionality in the minimum mode and some pins will have different functionality in the maximum mode and uh, we have to explain about all the pins that comes under uh, common mode signals so here this is uh, ad0 to ad15 which is of uh, 16 bit uh, um, address and uh, data multiplex lines and next here it is uh, uh, address and status multiplex lines so we have to explain about the function of uh, each pin during t1 t2 t3 and tw time states and another common mode signals here are so bhc bar by s7 that is uh, bus high enable so we have to write the information when that particular uh, status information will be sent and when this uh, bhc bar signal will be enabled okay so we have to explain the function of all these pins with respect to t states and uh, next is rd bar that is read signal microprocessor will read the information from the memory or io devices through this rd bar signal only that two reading will be done at this t2 t3 and tw time states and next one is a ready signal so this is the signal that is meant for the slower devices in order to indicate whether the data transfer is completed or not another one is intr signal any other master wants to request the system bus access it will be requesting through this intr signal and next one is a test bar signal okay so if this text bar signal is low only the execution will be continued otherwise the processor will go into the ideal state and nmi represents here non maskable interrupt which is also called as a type 2 interrupt if any interrupt comes through this nmi pin that particular interrupt should be executed compulsory it is not uh, it cannot be disabled so that is why it is called non maskable interrupt it cannot be masked and another one is here reset if it is enabled the microprocessor will get reset it begins its execution from the starting again and here you have clock signal it is from 5 megahertz to 10 megahertz based on the version it is going to provide the clock frequency for 8086 microprocessor and here vcc plus 5 volt supply ground is the connection for the internal circuit that is about the common pins of 8086 one classification and next we have the pins 
having different functionality in the minimum mode. So what are that pins here means? One is INTA bar that is interrupt acknowledgement. If the processor is willing to release the system bus axis, it will be sending through this. It will be telling through this INTA bar signal. And M by IO bar means memory and IO operation. So here, when this M by IO bar pin is 1, it indicates memory uh, read operation. If M by IO bar pin is 0, it indicates IO read or write operation. Next, WR bar, microprocessor is going to write the information to memory or IO devices using this pin. And DT by R bar means data transmit and receive. Okay. So if DT by R bar is 1, data transmission. If DT by R bar is 0, data will be received. And DN bar means data enable. So it indicates whether a valid data is uh, uh, available on the data bus or not. And ALE stands for address latch enable, which is used to demultiplex the address and data lines. And uh, another one is hold signal. Another master will request the system bus access through this hold signal. And hold acknowledgement. If it is willing to release the system bus access, it will be sending the acknowledgement signal. So that is what about the minimum mode signals. The third classification is here about maximum mode pins. So MN by MX bar, it says whether uh, 8086 should be operated in the minimum mode and maximum mode. Another one is lock bar. If that signal is enabled, the system bus cannot be released to any requested masters. And here S0, S1, S2, these are the three status signals which indicates the status of, uh, that is uh, the type of operation, whether it is reading, writing, whether it is from the memory or from the I.O. And another one is request and grant. So these signals will be uh, used to request the system bus access. If it is willing, granting will be done using this signal only. And we have QS0 and QS1, which indicates the status of the queue. And uh, next question is, illustrate about the function of the following pins. So here some of the pins are given ALE, NMI, Reset, S3 and S4. So function of the pin we have to write here. So while writing the function we have to indicate machine cycle consists of four T states T1, T2, T3 and T4 in which is T state what will be enabled. So if ALE means address latch enable, if it is 1, you know ALE signal is used to demultiplex the address and status lines. If ALE is 1, um, it carries only address and if ALE is 0, it is going to carry only the data. And another one is NMI which is called non-maskable interrupt. Another we can call it as type 2 interrupt. And uh, here NMI it is also hardware interrupt. When any interrupt comes through this NMI signal, that particular interrupt cannot be disabled. And this, the interrupt coming through NMI will be ac accepted irrespective of the interrupt flag bit. Another signal is here, reset. When that signal is ac activated, the microprocessor is going to get reset. That means it is going to terminate all the current activities and it is going to start its execution again. And another two signals S3 and S4 are the status signals which indicates the selection of the segment register. So here four segment uh, registers are there. Extra segment, stack segment, code segment and data segment. So segment register selection will be done with the help of these two bits. Next, explain about the maximum mode operation of 8086 with the help of neat block diagram. So here we have to draw the block diagram of this uh, 8086 microprocessor when it is operating in the maximum mode. So the main difference between this block diagrams of the minimum mode and maximum mode is, so in the minimum mode we will not have this bus controller block, but here in the maximum mode we will have this bus controller block. 
Why? Because maximum mode is called multiprocessor mode. In order to connect multiple process, it should be connected through this bus controller only. And in this bus controller, all the control signals will be connected. The control signals will not be present in 8086 microprocessor. So, remaining block diagram will be same as the uh, minimum mode operation. So, after drawing this block diagram, we have to discuss about uh, the connection of how MN by MX bar pin should be to operate that in the maximum mode, it should be made equal to zero. That means that signal should be connected to ground. And here, considering the bus controller block, we have to say that all the control signals will be present within that bus controller block only. So, all these are the control signals that are present within the bus controller block. So, using this control signals, H086 will be communicating with other processors. And so, we also have all these uh, signals that are present and advanced uh, IO write and advanced uh, IO read commands are also there where the operation will be taking place one clock cycle ahead compared to the normal IO write and uh, memory write commands. Explain about the general bus operation with timing diagrams. So, you have to draw the timing diagram of general bus operation which indicates the function of all the signals. So, this is the timing diagram we have to draw indicating all the signals like clock. Okay, So, one mission cycle here it consists of uh, four clocks. If you want to insert wait states, we can insert wait states before T4. Next, we have to draw the ALE signal indicating that it will be enabled only during T1 and S0 to S2 which indicates the status signals. So, they will be active only during T1. They will become inactive in the remaining T states. And here address and status lines also. Address will be enabled only during T1. At T2, T3, TW and T4 status information will be available. In the address data multiplexer lines also during T1 address will be enabled. But in the remaining time states data will be available. And similarly here, RD by INTA bar, read and interrupt acknowledgement. Next, ready DT by R bar, that is data transmit and receive. So, based on read and write operation, we have to um, consider this data transmit and receive signal. And next, DEN bar and write bar, data enable and write operation. So, we have to draw all the signals. Uh, timing diagrams. So, this is the general bus operation. And so, you, we have to explain about uh, each signal at uh, what uh, time duration they will be enabled and in which time cycles they will be disabled. So, what information will be available in T1 state and what information will be available at T2, T3, TW and T4 states. So, which signal will be ideal or which signal will go into tri-state in which uh, time cycles we have to indicate here. Okay. Now, so illustrate about the following pins in 8086 microprocessor. So, here some of the pins are given. We have to write about the function of these pins. So, first one is DEN, it indicates uh, data enable. So, that is active low signal. If that is enabled, what happens means data transfer will be, uh, data transfer will be done by using data bus. And next one is DT by R bar, which indicates data transmit and receive. So, here transmitter is active high and receiver is active low. So, if this dt by r bar is 1, data will be transmitted. If this dt by r bar is 0, uh, data will be received. And another one is m by io bar. So, if that m by io bar pin is 1, because it is uh, m memory is active high and io is active low. If m by io bar is 1, uh, it indicates uh, memory operations, either it may be read or write. If M by IO bar is uh, 0, IO will be enabled. So, the IO read and write operations will be performed. And hold acknowledgement means 
whenever any signal comes through hold the processor is going to send the hold acknowledgement signal saying that it is willing to release the system bus access for the requested master and next one is explain about the function of the following pins so here also four pins are given we have to explain the function of each pin so the first pin is ad0 to ad15 it indicates multiplex address and data lines so they will be demultiplexed based on this uh, ale signal okay so address latch enable if ale is high address information will be available during t1 if ale is low data information will be available during remaining time states another one is ready signal as we have discussed earlier and qs0 and qs1 represents the information about the status of the queue regarding code prefetch queue so based on uh, the combination of qs0 and qs1 uh, the status of the queue can be seen and here s0 s1 and uh, s2 these are the three uh, status lines which indicates the type of operation that is carried out by the processor that means whether reading writing halt whether if it is through io port or memory okay so the type of operation will be decided by these three status lines and next question is write the function of the following pins here we have ale address latch enable intr interrupt request nmi non maskable interrupt and clk represents clock signal okay so as we have seen Uh, while discussing the pin diagram of 8086 all these signals are the slash enable interrupt request non maskable interrupt and clock signals so the same function we have to consider and here this question also related to pin diagram only so illustrate about the following pins present in 8086 microprocessor so we have we have to write the functionality of that pins so first one is ready test hold and reset signals so here uh, the function of all these uh, signals have been clearly discussed in the video that is pin configuration of 8086 microprocessor so you can refer that for detailed uh, discussion and the one is output the in, outline the interrupt structure of 8086 microprocessor and explain so we have to draw how the interrupt structure will be which indicates how many types of interrupts are available in 8086 that means here we have to show all the 256 uh, interrupts and we have to also say how many interrupts comes under uh, each classification because this 256 interrupts are classified into three groups so how many interrupts comes under this dedicated reserved interrupts um available interrupts so we have to say and we have to also say um here how the isr address will be calculated and so here the question may be like explain about the interrupt handling mechanism in 8086 and another way the question can be asked here illustrate about the interrupt cycle of 8086 okay so interrupt handling mechanism and the interrupt cycle whenever the interrupt comes when the processor is executing the main program whenever the interrupt comes in between how the microprocessor is going to respond to the interrupt so what is the procedure it is going to follow say here the interrupt handling mechanism or the interrupt cycle of 8086 so when the cpu is executing the main program if any interrupt comes through the intr pin or nmi pin of 8086 microprocessor what the microprocessor is going to do it is first going to complete execution of the current instruction then it is going to increment the value of ip then only it can know what is the next instruction that should be executed after executing isr and it is going to send the intr bar signal through nmi and through intr it is going to check the interrupt flag bit if any interrupt comes interrupt flag bit should be set 
so if the interrupt flag bit is set the signal the interrupt which is coming through uh, intr will be accepted and this interrupt acknowledgement will be sent if interrupt bit is not set that particular interrupt will be ignored so this is the case only if the interrupt is through intr pin if the interrupt is through nmi pin no need to consider the interrupt flag bit so after sending the interrupt acknowledgement the cpu is going to calculate the vector address so the contents of cs ip and flag register it will be pushed on to the stack the interrupt flag and trap flag will be cleared after that interrupt will be executed that pro program which is called interrupt service routine at the end of interrupt service routine the last instruction it should be iret when the processor executes this particular instruction again it is going to the stack and it is going to retrieve the contents of cs ip from the stack and it goes to the main program and it starts executing the main program where it has stopped till end of the program and you can also draw this diagram to say uh, all these steps and outline 8086 interrupt groups in the interrupt vector table so here it consists of 256 interrupts they are classified into three groups so this diagram we have to say okay so these are the three groups and how many interrupts comes under each group so here these are the three groups so some comes under dedicated interrupts some comes under reserved interrupts and some comes under available interrupts which is also called as user defined interrupts so we have to explain clearly what is meant by dedicated interrupts the function of int 0 why they are called dedicated int 1 means it is going to perform the single step execution int 2 non maskable interrupt and int 3 breakpoint interrupt so we have to explain clearly about the uh, dedicated interrupt each dedicated interrupt and the next one is here reserved interrupts they are reserved for higher process next one is available interrupts they are called user defined interrupts so we have to draw that uh, uh, vector table and then you have to write about classification so distinguish between polling method and interrupt method in 8086 microprocessor so here two methods are there to perform the data transfer between io devices and microprocessor so here the two methods are one is interrupt method another one is polling method so here we have to consider how the data transfer or how the microprocessor is going to respond when the interrupt is of type interrupt method if it is of polling method so by considering all these uh, parameters here we have to write the comparisons so these parameters also includes some advantages and disadvantages comparing these two methods and so what operation is performed during handling an interrupt service same if any interrupt comes in between how the microprocessor is going to respond says the interrupt handling mechanism or the interrupt cycle of 8086 microprocessor okay so the same a uh, thing we have to discuss here or we can also say the steps with the help of this diagrammatical representation next so list out different types of uh, dos interrupts and write their function so number of dos interrupts are there so we we have to consider what are different dos interrupts and we have to write what is the function of that dos interrupts so here dos stands for disk operating system so different interrupts that comes under this dos is int 10 which is called a video stream so in that int 10 only you can have uh, different uh, functions that can be executed in order to perform some special operations so this special operation can be done so by considering the function number and that function number should be loaded into ah register and function 2 also indicates some special operation so function 3 all these are different functions in the same interrupts and another dos interrupt here is int 
which indicates the operation related to keyboard and display on the screen. So under this uh, interrupt type, we have different functions like uh, function 9 to display a string, function 2 to display a single character, function 1 to input a single character, function A to input a string. So here whatever the function number we are seeing, that particular number should be loaded into AH in order to perform this operation. And function 4C to terminate the program. And another interrupt is int16 which performs the keyboard programming. Under that we have function 1 and function 0. So these two functions will perform some special operation. And so illustrate about different types of uh, BIOS interrupts and their function. So previously the question is related to DOS interrupts. Now here it is regarding BIOS interrupts. So here BIOS stands for basic input output system interrupts. So it is having different interrupts like uh, INT 10H which represents a video service interrupt, INT 11H which says the type of equipment uh, installed in the system and INT 12H which indicates the memory size and INT 13H which indicates the how to control the uh, disks and INT 14 to control the serial communication ports okay and INT 15 how to control various IO devices. So INT 16 represents controlling the keyboard in the system and INT 17 access the parallel printer. So all these are different functions. So here explain about the functions of the following DOS interrupts. So here when these function calls are called, what is the type of operation that will be performed in this DOS interrupts? So it also depends on the type of the interrupt. So function call 01 may be in uh, two or three interrupts. So here if it is function call 1, INT21 will be having a different operation, INT16 will be having different operation. So these two interrupts also consist of function call 01. And similarly, function call 02 means it is present in INT10 and INT21. So the operation will be different. So function call 3 and function call 4. So we have to discuss the operation when each function call is called. And here also the question is related to BIOS interrupt. When these particular interrupts are called, what is the type of uh, function that will be executed? They are asking to explain. So INT10 means video service interrupt and INT11 it indicates the type of uh, equipment in installed in the system and INT12 which indicates the memory size and INT13 it says how to control the uh, hard disks. And so summarize about the concept of interrupts in 8086. So here we are going to write the summary like uh, what is meant by interrupt. Okay. So what are different uh, sources that can interrupt the processor and how many uh, methods are there to transfer the data between processor and IO devices that is polling method and another one is interrupt method. And next we have to say what are different uh, classification of interrupts that are available in 8086 microprocessor like uh, hardware interrupts, software interrupts, okay, vector and non-vector interrupts, maskable and non-maskable interrupts. So summary of interrupts we have to write. And next one is part C which deals with uh, short answer questions. So here list the operating modes of 8086. Two operating modes are there. One is minimum mode and maximum mode. And what are different uh, minimum mode signals of 8086 microprocessor? So here 8086 microprocessor is having 40 pins. Some signals have common functionality in the minimum mode and maximum mode. Some pins will have different functionality in the minimum mode and different functionality in the maximum mode. So all these are the pins that comes under minimum mode 
signals. And here list the maximum mode signals of 8G86 microprocessor. Here all these are the maximum mode signals. So just we have to list here. And we can also write the full form of this. Uh, signals like minimum and maximum log status signals request and grant signals queue status signals and what are different uh, hardware interrupts in hg 86 only two hardware interrupts are there intr that is interrupt request nmi non-maskable interrupt and what is the function of ale dhe by s7 de and dt by r bar so here these are the four pins of hg 86 microprocessor so the function of each pin here we have to explain. So already we have seen this in the pin diagram of 8G86. ALE used to demultiplex the address and status lines. Uh, bus high enable. And next one is DE and data enable. And next comes DT by R bar data transmit and receive. And how the following pins of 8G86 microprocessor function. So here we have to write uh, the function of uh, these four pins one is ready which is the signal coming from the slow devices another one is mn by mx bar that signal says whether hg rate 6 should be operated in the minimum mode and maximum mode next one is hold signal another master will request the uh, system bus through this hold signal and hold acknowledgement release the system bus to the requested master by using this hold acknowledgement signal and define a interrupt vector table. So interrupt vector table is a link between the interrupt type code and the procedure that has been designated to service interrupts associated with that code. So define a interrupt service routine. Okay. So when the CPU is executing the main program, if any interrupt comes, it breaks the normal execution of the instruction, diverts its uh, uh, execution to some other program which is called interrupt service routine. So after executing ISR again the control will go back to the main program and it executes the remaining lines in the main program. So distinguish between maskable and non-maskable interrupts. So if any interrupt comes through the INTR pin that particular interrupt is called maskable interrupt that means the interrupt that can be disabled. If any interrupt comes through this NMI signal, it is called non-maskable interrupt because that particular interrupt cannot be disabled. And what is meant by polling method? So this is one of the data transfer method. So here in the polling method, the microprocessor will continuously monitor the status of the given device, though there is no interrupt. So when the device condition is met, then only it is going to provide the service. And so list the priorities of 8G86 interrupts. That means if more number of interrupts comes at a time to 8G86 microprocessor, how it is going to resolve the problem. So by assigning priorities to the interrupts. So divide error INTN and INTO is having the highest priority. Next highest priority is for NMI. Next comes for INTR. And the least priority will be for this single step. And next one is, what is the function of INT03H? So this INT03H, it is the instruction generally we will write at the end of the program because it represents breakpoint of the program. So its uh, uh, ISR address in the interrupt vector table is 0000CH. How the interrupt response of 8G86 microprocessor is performed? That means generally when interrupt comes in between during execution of the main program, how the microprocessor is going to respond? So already we have discussed this in the interrupt handling mechanism or the steps when steps when an interrupt occurs. So list different types of interrupts in 8G86 microprocessor. So hardware and software interrupts, vector and non vector interrupts, maskable and non maskable interrupts. So distinguish between minimum mode and maximum mode signals. So these are the differences. So these differences between minimum mode and maximum mode are related to the architecture point of view. Okay. 
So minimum mode means it is called uniprocessor mode. Maximum mode means it is called multiprocessor mode. Okay. And MN by MX bar should be connected to VCC because it is minimum. Whereas to operate in the maximum, it should be connected to ground. And here ALE signal for the latch is given by 8086. By here we have one important block which is called bus controller. And here all the status signals will be there within 8086. But here all the status signals will be there in the bus controller block. Okay. So here all these are different uh, uh, differences regarding architecture of 8086 when it is operating in the minimum mode and maximum mode. So the comparisons we have to write here. And what are DOS and BIOS interrupts? So DOS stands for disk operating system and BIOS stands for basic input output system. Okay. So these are the interrupts that are used to perform some very special functions. So whatever the function may be, the function number should be loaded into this AH register. Then only it is going to perform that particular function. And so how the following DOS interrupts function. So here function call 01 and function call 02. In the different DOS interrupts are there. So we have INT21H and INT16H that comes under DOS interrupts. So INT21H different uh, uh, function during function call 01. And if it is INT16, the same function call 01 will be having different function. Similarly, function call 02 also. We have INT10 and INT21. In both these interrupts, function call 2 will be performing different operation. Next, what is the uh, function of the following BIOS interrupts? That means here only one interrupt is given, that is INT10. So the function of INT10 is video service interrupt. Okay, so it is going to control the video display in the system. So whatever the value we are going to load into this AH register, then video service will be provided by that interrupt. And so how pipelining is achieved in 8086 microprocessor? So in this 8086 microprocessor architecture, we have two units, BIU and EU. Okay, so based on this uh, um, architecture, the pipelining can be achieved. So pipelining is possible due to the use of Q that is available in the bus interface unit. So it fills in the Q until the entire Q is full. But bus interface unit restarts filling the Q when the least two instructions of the Q are vacant. And compare the following interrupts NMI and INTR. NMI stands for non-maskable interrupt and INTR stands for maskable interrupt. So non-maskable interrupt means the interrupt that cannot be disabled. It is irrespective of the interrupt flag bit. INTR means it is called interrupt request, which is also called as maskable interrupt. That means the interrupt that can be disabled. So it will be dependent on the interrupt flag bit. Thank you. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.